everyone, welcome back to APEA Dog Grooming. Today we are going to be grooming this toy poodle and her name is Sandy. Sandy is what I consider a senior dog. She is over 10 years old and we are going to start off our grooming process with a pre-bath brush out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video if you like what you're watching. So Sandy isn't matted at all. Um, we are just using a long pin slicker brush today and the reason for that is because we're going to be using our clipper with some attachment combs. So when using attachment combs you always have to have your coat nice and detangled because the attachment comb will actually catch on any knot or tangle. So make sure to brush that dog nice and thoroughly right before our rough cut. So I've recently purchased this long pin slicker brush and oh my god, it is a time saver. So this long pin slicker brush I would use in this case for a uh, pre-bath brush out and I would use a regular uh, slicker brush for fluff drying. This is just to get, you know, the, the bulk of the brushing done and then you can go over it with a normal slicker brush. So Sandy's owner didn't want a shave down, but they did want a shorter hair on Sandy because apparently she has been leaving some hairballs all over the house. So, you know, doing this um, brush out will really help with um, the hairball she leaves around the house. So even though poodles aren't a shedding breed they still need to be um, you know brushed out regularly not because not just because of the matting and the knots and tangles but also because when you brush out and you take out um, dead hair it actually promotes the skin from creating new healthy hair and replacing the dead hair that you know they have in their follicle. I do have a video on all of this if you are interested in viewing that I will make sure to leave a link if I forget to do that you can always check out my playlists and it's in my basic dog grooming videos. Oh my god doesn't she have the cutest face ever? So the owner didn't um, specify whether they wanted, you know, a an even haircut, you know, on the body and the legs and everything. All they said is that they wanted a roundish face and the, the hair length to be taken down maybe less than half of what she has already. So what I decided to do was to you know bring the body short not shaved with a seven I think I used a number 5f see on the body and I actually used a clipper I'm sorry a attachment comb on my clipper for the legs and that it's not really an Asian fusion cut but it's close to it because an Asian fusion cut would would be the legs really full and a really tight body and a round face but this is a, the shorter version of that Asian fusion hair, hair cut 
I think it's just more easy for the owners to maintain at home. Asian Fusion haircuts, while they are very cute and very um, versatile because, you know, it, they don't have a standard as a, as a normal haircut would be. You know, poodles have some certain way of cutting them and doodles have another and cocker spaniels have another asian fusion is more of the what best accommodates to that dog but with that being said it is still hard to maintain because they really really like the legs to be nice and fluffy but not every owner is going to be brushing every day you know most of the dogs that come in my shop just want a shave down so but you know it's not fun to do shave downs all the time but if you know the owner asks for it then that's what they're gonna get or you know if it's necessary because the dog comes in so knotted or so matted um, or if they just don't come in that often at all a shave down is your best bet because the next time they'll see you they won't be as matted or, you know, as bad in the shape. So yeah, that's my take on um, dog grooming. It's what best accommodates the pet first and then what best accommodates the owner second. Um, you know, I've had some matted dogs come in and then the owner says, oh yeah, I want them to be nice and fluffy. And I'm like, well, that's not an option. You know, you come in every six months and you don't brush. I'm going to do a shave down, that's, that's about it. I'm not going to be uh, brushing out mats and, you know, causing discomfort when, you know, if you don't like brushing your pet at home, well, you can get a shave down and, you know, by the time they come in, they'll be as fluffy as you want, but I'm going to be doing the same thing when they come back if you don't maintain or you don't, um, come in as often because fluffy coats you guys take a lot of work trust me I have a poodle mix and it takes me about about the same size I think as Sandy and it takes me about I don't know two hours to um, groom him and I do groom him about maybe every three weeks or four it depends because he plays a lot with his brothers and it just depends how rough he is in shape by the time you know when he starts to smell kind of funky and yeah because long coats oh my god they hold in so much um you know nastiness if they're if they're playing about with their brothers Alright, so we are doing the body with a number 7FC and I have a ceramic edge on there and that just, um, since I don't have another 5F, I just have one because I don't use it that often. Um, I did make sure it was a ceramic so it wouldn't heat up as fast as a ultra edge would. So this way I can keep using it and you know, it won't get hot. So this is still the rough cut. We haven't bathed or dried or anything. We've just brushed out and then gone through with the clipper. And I'm just, you know, going to do the body of Sandy and I'm going to skim off on the legs so they don't look like, you know, big pom-poms. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Sandy's a very polite um, doggy. I can tell she's used to being groomed. She she isn't um, fidgety. She isn't um, aggressive. All she is is just really um, shy, I guess, because she um, doesn't move a lot. But, you know, it can be because of the age, but I'm pretty sure she's used to being 
groomed a lot and I can tell because when doing you know her face and the bath and everything and the blow dry she was pretty accustomed to being handled and you know so it's very important when um, having a pet is to make sure you take them often to the groomers so that you know they don't get freaked out by you know the the whole process because it's not just about the haircut I think that's something the owners some owners not all owners but some owners um, you know tend to overlook is that a grooming process is not just the haircut it's really the overall behavior of um, I'm sorry the overall care from a aesthetics points of view because you know for one if you keep changing their groomers they never get used to the same person and you know trust issues as we're seeing here she's really calm but you know she's I think scared or really shy and you know it's something we never really put our minds to is that well first off I'm going into this place and my owner is leaving me there and second I don't know this place that you know the smells are all different from what I know from home and you know this person is touching me all over she's you know using equipment that makes really not loud noises and then she's getting me wet and then she's getting me dry you know all of that is really um, I don't want to say traumatic but it is an experience that they need to be put through often because grooming should not be a like a battle you know it shouldn't be something that you should have to you know deal with it's something that should be natural by now and that's something I found in Sandy that she's really used to it she's really um, comfortable maybe she was shy with me maybe if with her other groomers you know they she knows them for a longer time this is actually my second time with her but even though she was scared she was very polite and I really appreciate that so I'm just using some oatmeal shampoo on her and she doesn't have sensitive skin but I figured since you know it's you know winter time that she should be um, you know because of the cold and all of that we should use a mild shampoo on her skin just to prevent you know any dryness and everything because of her age and all so yeah make sure to wash those eye boogers you guys know by now that I hate eye boogers but um, she didn't have as bad as other clients but you know make sure to rub that area because eye boogers can hold a lot of moisture and you know moisture holds bacteria and it's so close to the eye that I don't like that very much so just clean it away alright so for the purpose of this video I have already rinsed her, blow dried her, fluff dried her everything you guys saw I did the sanitary trim before the bath and that's just something that I do sometimes I don't do it all the time before the bath but um, since I had the clippers there and everything I just figured I'd do it anyway we are doing the final cut and we are using again our 5F blade 5FC blade because there is a skip tooth at least on Andes blades so we're using the 5FC with the ceramic blade on it and we're just going over the body as you saw in the rough cut it seemed like we have got every um, hair but after the blow dry since the hair stands you know straight up because we fluff dried um, you just always want to go back and make sure you get everything because if you don't do a final cut 
you can leave some patchiness of um, short and long hairs here and there. So we're just gonna skim off the legs, just like I said earlier, so they don't look like pom-poms. So sorry about not uploading since I think like two weeks before the pug video, but um, yeah, work has been really rough. In the past two weeks, I haven't had one single client and Sandy is just a video I had recorded, um, I think early on in December and um, you know, I just... I do have some videos here and there, or at least parts of videos, um, and then I forget about them, and then when I don't have a client, I freak out, so I don't upload, but then I found this one, so that's why I'm, um, that's why you're watching this one, but this is at the beginning of December, so, yeah, it's been really rough. I can only imagine, you know, other businesses, not just dog grooming. So with the same blade, with the 5FC, I'm going to shave one third of the tail just so that she has a pom-pom at the tip of her tail. She doesn't have a docked tail, which I really, really appreciate, you know, her, her owner's not cutting that off. I prefer them to have a nice long tail because that way you can really see their emotions. You know, when a dog is super happy, it just wags its tail and yeah, it's just a way of, I guess, expressing themselves. And if they have a duck tail, well, they, you can't really see all that, so. On my own Pudo Mix, he also has his full tail. And not because I wanted it to have, wanted him, sorry, to have the full tail but just by the time we adopted him I guess you could say that yeah um he was already pretty grown he was almost a year old and that's too old I think for you know just docking a tail so by the way when I say docking a tail I mean you know the like cocker spaniels are born with really short tails. Well, on poodles, they're usually not born with short tails, but they go through a medical procedure and they trim off the, I don't know what percentage of the tail is supposed to be left because I'm not a vet, but you know, part of the tail is trimmed off and it's really just more of an aesthetics, trying to get them the most, um, close to their pedigree standard but yeah by the way if your pet does have a short tail and has gone through all of that please don't be offended it's just my opinion um, you know I prefer them to have their full tail it's just a preference I guess I mean I know for show dogs and all of that it's a requirement to have them you know, in their best, um, you know, the, so that they conform to the the rules of show dog grooming. But for pets, I really don't think that's necessary. You're not going to be showing them. It's not something I would prefer. So while checking her nails for the trim, I actually found that one of her hind nails was wrapped up in a huge mat. And I've never seen that before. Um, you know, the nail being covered with the dog's own hair. 
So I'm just trimming that away. I try to get you guys as close as possible. And then I'm just pulling off whatever I can. It's not attached, you know, the hair is not attached to her her body. It's it's just dead hair wrapped around her nail. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. Like I said in my cheeky video, I'm pretty nosy of, um, you know, how the owners get their pets. If you would like to share your story on how you got your own pets, make sure to leave your comment down below on any video. I read all comments. I don't respond to all of them. Um, I do respond to most of them as much as I can. And yeah, leave your story in the comments section and I'll be sure to read it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content like this one. So I was actually going to leave the legs as they were, but I decided they were still a little too long for my liking. And I was pretty sure the owner wasn't going to brush at home. So I decided just to, you know, take a little bit off with this comb attachment. I am using the color orange and these are the Oster stainless steel ones. Um, Andes does have some uh, comb attachments but I believe they are either magnetic or they're plastic and well magnetic ones I didn't really care for because I was you know doing my research on whether to buy them and apparently they slip off or you know they're just mo more prone to when catching a tangle, they just slip off and then whatever blade you're using under, you'll just, you know, make a, make a cut with whatever blade you're using under. So for example, if you were using a 30 on a nice fluffy leg, if it catches on a knot, you'll leave a big dent with a number 30. And as for the purple plastic ones, well, you know, and I don't have any complaints so far about Andes, but I don't believe plastic combs were the way to go for me because I like to disinfect everything and I really, you know, um, submerge things in bleach when I'm done. So I don't think the plastic would have held up as well as I needed it to be, as I needed it to. So these Oster comb attachments are wonderful. They're stainless steel and they're pretty durable. They do have the hooks on the back so you can hook it up onto the blade and then slide it on to your clipper. And so far, so good. I don't have any complaints so far, so I will recommend these Oster comb attachments. I know Wall makes these hook um, comb attachments too. It's just that I've never tried the Wall one, so I won't recommend what I haven't used. So yeah, Oster it is. The only thing I do have to say about these Oster ones is that they come in a box. You, when purchasing the Oster ones, you have to get the whole set. They come in this, um, you know, really durable blue box. And as for the wall uh, comb attachments, you can actually buy each uh, comb attachment separately and you can buy the set. So, you know, if one breaks or you lose one or whatever happens to one of them or you only need one, you can use that one and, you know, buy that one and replace it or just use the one you need. So now that I have a fair amount of subscribers, I've made the commitment to upload videos every Saturday, so keep on the lookout for that. So now moving on to the face, I'm going to comb everything forward from where half of the head, basically from where the ears start. I'm going to comb everything forward and I'm going to create that visor. 
with my curved shears just gonna go from the outer corner of the eye to the other outer corner of the eye and just make sure that she has visibility and clean out the inner corner of the eye so that the next time I see her she doesn't have you know bad eye boogers You can always use your thinning shears for any trimming parts if you're not sure what you're doing. Thinning shears um, are very forgiving. You know, if you make a cut and you don't like it, it usually won't show up because it takes out so little hair. But, you know, scissors are just a faster way to go. And what I'm doing is just lifting up with my fingers whatever hair um, I want to be trimmed. Just lifting it up so I can catch it with my scissors. And now I'm just going to use the same curved sh shears or scissors just to round off her top knot. Something else I want to point out when cutting so close to the ear leather and that's when you want really short ears is that you always have to feel with your other hand where the ear leather is you don't ever want to just go straight in um, with your scissors unless you know they have um, a long hair or you know the ear leather is far from where you're putting your scissors at So I'm just going to take her off the grooming loop like so tight because I don't really like that. I know another groomer suggested to me to always have a dog on a grooming loop and I'm all for that but for you know safety reasons but I'm right there. She's not moving, she's not struggling or anything so I'm just going to take her off that grooming look for a second while I do her head and I just want to say that I really do appreciate um, all your comments and suggestions um, or advice or anything you know you leave on my my comment area I do not take offense to constructive criticism because, well, you know, we've all gone through something to make us want to help or, you know, give advice when you see something that you don't like. And that's, that's just human nature of a kind person, I think. You know, not everyone grooms the same way. Not everyone agrees with, you know, the strategies or the process that every groomer has but I do appreciate constructive criticism. I know there are a lot of dog grooming youtubers out there like really successful ones and um, like I said earlier I don't believe that there is a right way or a wrong way it's just different and for different um, situations and you know the, the dog that you're you have on your table not every dog is the same so yeah I I don't agree with everything um you know even the most <laughs> beloved dog grooming channels out there I don't agree with everything they have to say or every process they do but I do respect them and I really appreciate when others try to help and give advice because that just tells me, you know, hey, you really care for what you do and if you see something you don't like, you, you're obviously going to have something to say. And that's completely normal. You have some advice to give. It's on me whether I take it or not, but your kind nature for even giving that advice is speaks for itself you know 
And there are some dog grooming channels out there that are not as beloved and are pretty controversial. And it's a, it, it is a, sub, a touchy subject when criticizing someone else's work because one, you're not there. Two, you don't know what their experience has been. And everyone grooms differently. You know, there's no right way, there's no wrong way. And something we have to keep in mind always is that our end goal is the same. You know, the end goal is to care for the pet, to not hurt the pet. As long as, you know, there's no abuse going on, I think we are all going the same direction. We're all looking for that um, successful groom. I don't think there's such a thing as a dog groomer who just wants to, you know, cause harm or cause discomfort. It's just some people are, you know, rough around the edges and some are not. But that doesn't mean that, you know, they're wrong just because maybe you're more soft-spoken, that you're more um, likable. No, there's... There's different people out there and there's obviously going to be different um, reactions to those people. Anyway, so we are going to do the same thing that we did on the right side to the left side. As you watched, as you were listening, I like to, to get all of the hairs that curl up under the lip. Because, especially on poodles, those hairs that curl up into the mouth get tangled up in between the dog's teeth. And then, you know, you really never ever check your dog's teeth, to be honest. Um, so, I learned that the hard way, actually, you guys. My, my own poodle mix I was mentioning earlier had some fur, some hair tangled in between their teeth, his teeth, and it actually caused for, you know, some damage to his gums and all of that nature. So I like to clip as short as I can around the lips. And it hides behind the muzzle hair anyway, so you can't see that. At this point, I have her laying down. Remember, I did take off that grooming loop. And, um, you know, she's more comfortable this way. I am, you know, um, bending over a little bit more. But she was my only client of the day. But, yeah, um, if you do have a grooming table, I would suggest getting a hydraulic grooming table or an electrical grooming table that way you can accommodate the height of your client to your stature because um, in the long run you will cause back pain I know for sure that when I have a busy week my back kills me so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that but um, for the meantime I'm still going to be using my tub but yeah I highly recommend getting yourself an, adjust an adjustable table so we're almost done we're now just um, clipping away any sticky outies or whatever you call them I just find that with um, poodles, there's always something you need to trim before you know you're completely sure that you're done. I'm not a perfectionist in any way because I'm very far from perfect, but I do try to make, um, you know, try try my best to do my best work 
in each groom so I wasn't happy with when I was almost sure I was done I you know would go and put away something and then I would look back at her and be like oh I forgot something else and I would just grab my scissors again and keep snipping away So right before I put the little bandana on my clients when I'm done, I just, you know, go over them with the dryer just to get rid of any hair that may stick to their own hair because sometimes the owners come in a car and, you know, if they they come in walking, you know, the dog will probably shake on its way home and, you know, all the loose hairs will just, you know, get will be left on the street but if they're going into a car it's really important for you as a courtesy to your client your paying client to you know not get their their car seats full of hair of loose hair so again I'm just nitpicking while I was waiting for the owner to come get her I was just nitpicking at um, when I thought what what I thought was already done but I just kept looking at her and just finding pieces that I needed to trim anyways I'll be leaving some before and after pictures at the very end of the video so make sure to check those out I did leave one at the very beginning if you wanted to see the final groom from the beginning and yeah I just want to thank you guys again for all the support you've been showing my channel. I really do appreciate you watching my videos and you know some of you leave comments. If you don't that's okay too. Um, just don't forget to subscribe if you like what you're watching and for more content. That just lets me know you know what type of grooms you guys like to watch if it's the haircut ones or if it's the matted ones it just really helps to um, you know get, get an overall feel of what my audience likes and I would really like for you guys to you know have a say in what you like to watch and what you don't like to watch so thanks again happy grooming and stay safe out there bye